Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Financially Speaking. I am your host today, Karen Cook. And if you haven't heard already, I have three dogs saying hello. The minute I get on the radio and say hi, they think somebody's here. So I do apologize that you might hear a little bit of art for the show today, although they might settle and sleep. So today we are actually going to be talking about the cost. Of, I know. Why are we talking about this Monday afternoon? I'm probably ruining your weekend. Well, not necessarily. But so we're going to talk about whether we can afford this, what does it cost, and it might be fun but it could be costly, but not just in the financial aspect. So we'll look at the finances. We'll look at our health. We'll look at society. So smoking, toking, and drinking, that's our topic today. So what are people using? I mean, I guess the choice changes every decade or so. So today, what people are choosing to socialize with, whether it's legal or illegal, prescription, over-the-counter, or herbal, are alcohol tobacco, caffeine. Yes, I know you had that this morning. That's what kept you going. You're probably thinking you'd like one right about now. But yes, caffeine is a drug. Marijuana is what people are using. And in Canada, as you know, last October 17th, it became legal. So it's even more widely used. And some of our not so nice kind of illegal drugs Cocaine is widely used. Heroin is highly used. Uh, hallucinogens are being used as well as various prescription drugs. And you might be thinking, what well, prescription drugs? Prescription drugs for the person who got them from the doctor is for them, therapeutic. But if it's not for you or you're misusing them or you're not taking the doses, the times and the routes that they were specified for, it becomes issue. Percocets. Oxycodones, oxycontins, morphine, hydromorphone. These are the big guns that are out there that our people are misusing uh, pretty rare, pretty, uh, pretty much all the time now. However, the most widely consumed psychoactive drug out there, except caffeine, is alcohol, and that seems to be widely used as well. So after that, water and coffee, which contains caffeine, second most consumed beverage is your caffeine in the form of coffee. Yes, unless you're having decaffeinated coffee, you are in taking that drug. And I think really that's why people drink coffee to get the caffeine, to give them the jump they need to start their day or to keep them going. So drinking alcohol itself or any any beverage with any kind of drug can be risky because it can really set up for negative impacts on society and a wide range of effects and side effects. It can increase rates of premature death, disability, disease, impaired driving, reduced productivity, and a burdened healthcare system, as well as a high financial burden to both the individual and society. So alcohol is is kind of a big issue, especially if it's being misused or or abused, okay? So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States, Americans spend about 1% of their gross annual income on alcohol. So for the average household, that's about $565 a year. And you might be thinking, well, big deal. That's $565 average that you might be spending. I mean, imagine what we could do with that money, right? And that's one part of our social activities. So drug and alcohol addiction costs Americans $276 billion, with a B, dollars a year. Americans spend about $276 billion every year drinking, smoking, and taking drugs, according to a recent analysis. The government of Canada... So across Canada, roughly the government received $10.5 billion in revenue and taxes from the sale of alcohol, according to Stats Canada, just a couple of years ago. So that's probably 
well higher and above what that is today. So it's pro that was 2014. So we're probably looking at about 12 to $15 billion today. Excessive alcohol consumption can have serious health and social consequences, especially when you combine it with other behaviors. So whether you're driving while intoxicated, trying to work or function while intoxicated, or what if you are adding another substance to it? What if you smoke cigarettes when you drink or smoke more when you drink or only smoke when you drink? What if you toke or take any kind of drugs to your alcohol? What is that doing to you? How is that working in the body? What is it costing you? I mean, if you go out to have a drink, go to a bar in Canada, well, in our area, you're looking at $4 and change for a drink, whether it's a beer, a mixed drink, or something else. If you're looking for a specialty drink, you know, you might be looking at $7, $8 for a drink. I don't know about you, but I might be able to afford two of those. And that's just afford. I got to get there. I got to get home. I have to function the next day. Do you smoke with it? Do you add drugs to it? Do you have a shot? Are you playing pool? I mean, what are you doing? Are you spending more money on something else? So even having a good time, having a drink, socially or not, can cost us. So we really want to make sure that we budget for that if we're going to participate in things. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's legal. It's a certain age, the legal age, to do these things. It's just a matter of your pocketbook and your health to drinking. Alcohol can cause problems. It, memory loss, blackouts, delirium, if through withdrawal. So if you're looking at someone who's an alcoholic and they're trying to withdraw out of it or they're detoxing, God forbid you're putting in, right? Or you spend the night in the drunk take and you're an alcoholic and you go, oh, you can go through the deliriums, the tremors, you can go into seizures. It can kill you. It's scary. And goodness forbid women that are pregnant that drink. Fetal alcohol syndrome. When your baby drinks because you do. And that's a permanent disorder. It's causing brain issues with babies. Right? They're not developing fully. Or you end up not caring to term. Or God forbid the born. Or born with a mental impairment. Which is for life. So alcohol we drink responsibly. So drinking alcohol can be linked to other disorders. It can be linked to brain damage, liver disease. As you know, your liver is the coffee filter to your health. It's like your coffee. You put your coffee through the filter, you drink what's left. You don't drink the coffee grinds. Your liver puts everything through it, just like that coffee filter. So when you drink, it goes through your liver. When your liver gets drunk, it bounces back in the body, and that's when you get sick. But do you stop? Probably not. And you drink, drink, drink. And God forbid, the worst case scenario, you pass out on your back and spray on your own vomit because what goes up comes down, and then you end up dying for a night of fun. So drinking responsibly is definitely the goal if you're going to partake. So other things that alcohol is linked to is different cancers, pancreatitis, mental health disorders, suicide. Oh, yes, folks, as much fun as we have drinking, it is a depressant. So if you are not happy and you're going to drink, maybe reconsider. So suicide, stomach ulcers, hypertension, it raises your blood pressure. It can cause stroke, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. And God forbid you get yourself a little promiscuous out there and don't love before the loving, you can end up with sexually transmitted infections So or worse. AIDS, HIV, could get pregnant, God forbid, you might not know who the father is. Oh. So there is a lot of responsibility that has to come with drinking if we're going to do it, not just the financial cost. So your alcohol, any alcohol consumption does affect every system in the body, your immune system, your stress, your memory, in your heart, blood, lung, brain, hormones, muscles, fertility, right? Whether or not you'll be able to have a baby. Yes, that's a big cost having a baby, but maybe that's something you're working towards, right? Uh, it can lead to violence. It can give you poor skin, right? Risky development. God forbid you're pregnant. So there's a lot of things that it can do. So we definitely want to make sure that we're drinking responsibly. Alcohol is one of the top 10 risk factors for disease 
and the top risk factor for people ages 15 to 49. That's when people seem to do the most drinking, which of course makes sense that it would be a huge risk factor. In 2002, uh, 4,258 deaths in Canada were related to alcohol abuse. The majority of them were alcoholic liver disease, motor vehicle accidents, and alcohol-related suicides. And the motor vehicle accidents were the drunk drivers. Over 4,000 deaths in one year in Canada alone because of alcohol. So if you are going to drink, you need to drink responsibly. Because alcohol can affect your bank account. It can affect your lifestyle. It can affect your career. It can affect your reputation. I mean, it can affect your finances, your income. Who wants to work with you? If you go out and you get a DUI and it becomes public record, because people find out, how do people look at you? What if you're in business for yourself? I am. Let's say it's me. I have my company, KC Training Plus. I teach CPR courses. I teach babysitting, stay safe courses for children, child CPR. I teach Ministry of Labor courses. I help businesses become compliant. Would a business look at me? Would a parent trust me to teach their child? Could I have a job if I lost my license? How do I get to my work? Cab it? Costs a lot of money to cab. Hire an Uber? Costs a lot of money. So there's so much that's involved with drinking with your finances and your reputation that, again, we need to be responsible. Drinking has short-term and long-term effects, right? It, it's 100% of deaths and disabilities from alcohol use disorders and fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. So 100% of deaths and disability come from drinking while pregnant. Guaranteed, your baby will have something wrong with it if you drink while you're pregnant. 50% is liver disease. 50% of people who drink will get liver disease probably from over drinking, but again, you got to watch your consumption. 20 to 30% of ability is from cancer of the mouth or the throat or laryngeal cancer, esophageal, pancreatitis, and even violence or self-harm. And 10 to 15% liver cancer, epilepsy, strokes, unintentional injuries, because let's face it, we get a little bit clumsy after we've had a few. So, there's so many issues to look at. And, of course, 10% could be breast cancer, heart disease, HIV, lower respiratory infections, STI. So lots of stuff out there to consider. And binge drinking, still negative. So if you're tying them on every Friday and Saturday night, ten, I don't know, having 10 drinks or so, just remember, it has negative impacts on your liver, your brain, your cardiovascular health, and, yes, cancer. So we want to be careful with that. And of course, it leads to other behaviors, smoking, toking, taking other drugs, right? So we want to be careful that we don't become toxic with our alcohol intake because the liver, the heart, the nervous, every, we need everything to work for us. And without that, nothing's going to work correctly. So to reduce those short-term issues and long-term issues, women should really not have more than three drinks on any single occasion. And men should not have more than four. So if you're going to go out drinking, have a drink, have a drink of water, right? Drink non-alcoholic in between or drink them slow. Don't play drinking games. Don't see who can drink it faster. Don't have shots in between it. So it's really good to make sure that we know the health risks involved and the cost of drinking and driving. Now, we're going to go to the first break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what it might cost you should you get caught drinking and driving, which I hope you're not doing. So you are listening to Financial East after the break. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. 
Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back to Financially Sign. I'm your guest host, Karen Cook, and today we are talking about smoking, token drinking. Can we afford it? What is the cost financially and health-wise? So uh, we talked a little bit about what, how we should control our drinking, right? Because uh, let's face it, it's out there, prohibition's over, and we're going to partake. So we really do just need to be responsible about it. So because there are so many health risks involved, there are times where we should abstain. If women are pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant and are breastfeeding, don't be drinking. If you're going to be driving using heavy, heavy machinery or tools, abstain from alcohol. If you have complications that will arise through prescription medications or, God forbid, other medications or drugs you're taking, be careful with that. And, of course, when you're living with mental or physical health problems, we really should abstain from alcohol. Um, any activity that you need judgment for before and during the activity, you really shouldn't be participating in alcohol because you might need your physical and your endurance. And, of course, if you're young, I know, trying stuff out, there is an age things for a reason. Uh, depending on where you live, it could be 18, 19, 21 for drinking age. Your brain actually develops till you're 25. So, truthfully, you shouldn't be touching any mind-altering substances to your brain's fully developed because anything ahead of that can cause developmental delays. But follow at least the drinking and whatever ages are out there. So, goodness forbid, you are convicted for drinking and driving. So, you get pulled over, you're drinking and driving. In Canada, it's an automatic Canada-wide driving prohibition and either a fine or jail sentence with the possibility of probation. So the minimum sentence is the first time, first offense, you're caught drinking. It's a $1,000 fine and a 12-month driving prohibition. So you're not driving for a year. Second time, you get 30 days in jail, two years of not driving, and your fine goes up. The third or subsequent offense is 120 days in jail, three years of not driving, and more than triple the fine. So, and that's not even hurting anybody. God forbid you hurt or kill somebody. You hurt somebody, you could go to jail for 10 years. The maximum is 10 years if you hit somebody. Don't kill them. You kill somebody, 25 years to life. It's 25 years, which is generally life, but they can run that consecutively and it could be your life, which means you stay till you're dead. Okay, we don't need that. One stupid moment. And, of course, you're going to end up with that special ignition interlock device program. So you'll have to breathe into that every time you want to start your car up. And you won't be able to drive if you've been drinking. Okay. So if you depend on your license for your job or your career, it might be over. And the loss of money and income you will suffer will be astronomical. You know, if, if your job depends on you having a license and you've lost it for three years and you have a great job, you now have no job. You don't have that income. The people you work with are going to find out. If you tell one person, it's, it's out there. The rule is seven. So it'll be out there. Everybody's going to know. And your reputation's shot. So maybe you'll drink more just to try and numb the pain. So it's a bad circle to get into. So if you're going to drink, drink responsibly. All right, enough on that. Let's go into smoking. Oh, my goodness. I know all the stuff out there today, and people still, I, I would like to think that a lot of people aren't smoking as much, but people are smoking. 
Smoking is related to more than 85% of cancer cases. 85%. So yes, you can get lung cancer if you don't smoke, but the risk is astronomical if you do. So the risk of developing lung cancer is influenced by how long a person smokes, their age when they started smoking, and the number of cigarettes smoked each day. And when you combine the smoking with other risk factors, that risk of lung cancer is increased. So cigarettes are a burning issue, no pun intended, but no surprise here, right? Smoking is by far, believe it or not, the most preventable cause of breathing breakdown. Tobacco use not only ups the risk of lung cancer, but it could lead to COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a disease in the lungs where you can't breathe. It contributes to early deaths of more than 37,000 Canadians every year. And secondhand smoke is just as harmful. And there's mounting evidence that thirdhand smoke, again, is dangerous. Look on your hand, you touch your child, you touch your, your dog, your cat, your furniture, then they, and that's thirdhand smoke. So you're transferring it to somebody else. What about your dog licking your fingers after you've had a cigarette? They're licking nicotine. You're killing them, right? It's a scary thing. So, again, you really want to be careful if you are smoking that you keep it basically to yourself, right? Each year, there are more than 230,000 deaths in Canada alone due to smoking. Research known that about 17% of deaths are due to smoking. 20% of that are male. 12% in females, and each day, 100 Canadians die of a smoking-related illness. Every day, 100 people die. So kiss your butt goodbye, your B-U-T-T, right? So lighting up is just about the worst thing that you can do to your breathing and your body. So it is so crucial for smokers really to try and quit. And I know it's difficult. It's a very difficult thing to quit. And to quit, you've probably tried a dozen times. And on average, people tie at least a dozen times to try and quit. But keep at it. Eventually, it will stick. I mean, cost of tobacco use in Canada alone, $16.2 billion a year. Billion. $16.2 billion today. Still, health care costs attribute to smoking in Canada were estimated to be more than $6.5 billion. And indirect costs due to lost production, well, because of people getting sick, cancer, whatever not, having issues related to smoking, that loss was $9.5 billion in the work industry. So tobacco kills to half of its users. If you smoke, you have a 50% success rate of living. You have a 50% chance of dying because of one of the issues that arise from smoking. 50%, I'm just saying, okay? Uh, Tobacco kills more than 7 million people each year, and more than 6 million of those deaths are the result of direct tobacco, while around 890,000 are non-smokers, secondhand smoke. So you don't need to smoke. You just have to have it around you. Not almost 900,000 people a year. It's almost a million people a year. I don't want to be one of those. So just having one to four cigarettes a day triples your risk of dying from lung cancer. Social smoking, bad for the heart. Almost as bad as regular smoking. Studies have shown that light and intermittent smokers have nearly the same risk of heart disease as people who smoke daily. So it doesn't matter if you have one a day, you have the same risk. It's what's in the tobacco. And tobacco use is the leading preventable disease of death in the United States. So I didn't forget about my American listeners. I've got you in here, too. Uh, So in the United States, cigarette smoking causes about one of every five deaths. It causes more than 480,000 deaths annually, including secondhand smoke, by the way. Over 278,000 deaths among men. Just over 201,000 deaths in women. And again, still secondhand smoke. Cigarette smoking causes premature death 
the life expectancy for smokers is at 10 years shorter than non-smokers. So if the average age of life is 87, you might live to be 77. Quitting smoking before the age of 40 reduces the risk of dying from smoking-related disease by 90%. And if you're over 40, don't worry about it. Percentage goes down just a little bit, maybe to 80%, but it still is better to quit than not. Secondhand smoke exposure causes 41,000 deaths each year in the United States. 7,000 of those are lung cancer, 33,000 of those are heart disease. Heart and lungs, that's what it's affecting. As far as the cost of cigarettes, a 25-pack of cigarettes in Canada costs around about $12 or more. In the United States, it might be around 5 or a little bit more. Now, to be fair, cigarettes are taxed heavily in Canada with the cost of cigarettes boasting taxes of 63 to 79%. So quite a bit more tax on it. But still, it's a deterrent to stop people from smoking. But if you smoke, you're going to find the money. And you think, well, that's okay. I'll just go to the Native Reserve. That's okay, too. Go there. What's in those cigarettes? Does it say? Are you buying the bag or are you rolling them yourself? Those might cost you 15 to $20 for a bag of cigarettes. A carton of cigarettes in Canada runs between 96 to 120 It doesn't matter what it costs anyway. You're still putting harmful chemicals in your body. So if you're a smoker, you know smoking is expensive. Just imagine how much money you could save if you stopped. I'm not talking a small amount here. If you smoke a pack a day, about 180 bucks a week on cigarettes, over $9,000 a year, what could you do with $9,000? What if you started to cut back? What could you do with that money? Put it in an account. Vacation, car, down payment on a home, child, pet, whatever. So if you've thought about trying to kick the habit, you're not alone. Nearly 7 out of 10 smokers say they want to stop. I hear it from a lot of smokers. And you know what I say? Try. Give it your best shot. Quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do for your health, and it's one of the hardest things that you're ever going to go through. Speak from experience. I was a smoker for many years, and two years ago, just over, I decided to quit, and I cut down. The day I decided to quit, I went down. I smoked. I probably smoked close to a pack a day. I went down to half a pack that day. My goal was every two weeks to cut down, and that's exactly what I did. I didn't, per se, it wasn't a New Year's resolution. I did it before Christmas, but I made sure not to make it a resolution. And I didn't exactly have a date set in mind, but I wanted to be done within six months. And if you can believe it, (laughs) I was done just out of that. So just before Christmas, I think it was December 19th, a couple, two, three years ago now. I can't remember. It seems like it was yesterday. Uh, I went from a pack to half immediately. And within two weeks, I'd cut down and cut down and cut down every two or so weeks. So I got to about May, and I was down to about two a day. And believe you me, I know if you smoke like it, I liked it. I didn't hate it. I didn't. I just knew it wasn't good for me. I had a bit of a health scare. That's what scared me. Everything's fine. But that was enough. And I knew someday if that anything were to happen, I was pretty sure I could quit. And I didn't use any cessation aids. I did it myself. I didn't do anything. I just cut down. And I got down to that last cigarette. And every night I'd sit out on my swing in my backyard and enjoy that 9 p.m. cigarette. And one night I fell asleep and I woke up. It was 1030. And I thought, let's see. That was June 14th, 2017. I have not wanted to smoke since then. I haven't really had cravings. I don't mind if I smell a cigarette burning, but I don't want to smell the after effect. I don't like that. And I, of course, you know, as you quit something, you're gaining weight. Then I decided to eat healthy. So not only did I do that, I quit smoking, and I lost 24 pounds in a year, 35 to date. So within that past year and a half and a bit, I've been able to not worry about the cigarettes. I don't miss them. I don't have the mood swings. I don't crave it. I've lost the weight. I've changed the way I eat. I feel healthier. I feel happier. I'm a little blah today because I'm getting over a cold. But there is never a time in that past over year and a half 
that I've wanted a cigarette. And I know it was hard and it was one of the hardest things I've done personally for myself. But if I can do it, I know you can do it. And we're going to go for a break right now. But when we come back, I'm going to talk a little about some of the cessation aids are out there so that you know that you're not alone. So you are listening to Financially Speaking with Karen Cook today on the Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. <laughs> This is Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Hello, welcome back to Financially Speaking. I am your guest host, Karen Cook, today, and we are discussing the cost of smoking, toking, and drinking. So before we went to break, we were talking about smoking. So if, you have, if you're a smoker and you've quit, congratulations. If you're a non-smoker, keep it up. And if you're a smoker, I'm not here to preach the choir. I get it. I did. It's awful to say. I was a nurse in the healthcare field for 20 years, healthcare instructor, a college professor. I know. But, man, it's an addiction, isn't it? So, um, and I did quit successfully. I don't plan to go back to it. But, again, it's like anything. It's a constant, a constant thing that I need to be aware of. But I know I'm never going to put one in my mouth because I feel better. I know I look better. I've, I, I've, I've done it the way that it worked for me. But to being alone, uh, not having it around me, being around people who don't smoke, um, it, it helps. Having a support group helps. So if you're around people that smoke, so if you smoke and your partner smokes, whoever you're with, your spouse, whatever, that's tough. Right, um, the guy was with smoked. Uh, I broke up with him not because of the smoking, but that's just a bonus. But um, I don't have that around me. And a very good friend of mine does smoke cigarettes, but it doesn't bother me. I don't go out with her in the cold when she has them if we are somewhere. But after that, she doesn't smoke in my vehicle unless I say it's okay because sometimes I don't care. But generally, I don't really want it around me. I have my dogs. I've got my family. I really don't want anybody breathing in it anymore. And I'm more sensitive to it. So if you're thinking of quitting, keep thinking. And if you are quitting, keep at it. Like I said, it could take a dozen times or more before it, before it takes. So you might turn to some station aids out there. And the electronic cigarettes or vaping is out there today, and it's pretty popular uh, it's it's a way to ease the transition from the traditional cigarettes to not smoking at all. But again, we have to be careful with that. Vaping is less harmful than traditional smoking. But e-cigarettes heat nicotine, 
The nicotine is what is extracted from tobacco. That's the substance you're addicted to. The minute you smoke a cigarette, those nicotine cells in your body wake up and go, hey, man, thanks. You're addicted. And it's always there. I'll have to fight that the rest of my life. Mine seemed to like it, though, because I cut down. I didn't cut cold turkey. That, that didn't, I didn't even want to try that. But let's give it a shot. And that's what worked for me. But it doesn't work for everybody. Don't make it a New Year's resolution. Don't say, I'm going to quit by this date. I decided six months. And I was five days shy of that at quitting. But the last one was the hardest. It was I fell asleep. Like I said, it just happened. And I thought, well, let's see. And I never went back. But the e-cigarettes do have nicotine in them. So again, you're still vaping in your nicotine. And sometimes they add other flavorings and other chemicals to create that water vapor that you inhale. Now, regular tobacco cigarettes contain seven that are toxic, many which are carcinogens that cause cancer. Uh, and if, I mean, there's formaldehyde. I mean, I might want to preserve myself later, but not now. And there's tons of other bad things in cigarettes. And I mean, you can look all that up. There's just so many I didn't. But uh, vaping is not as bad as cigarettes, but again, still not great for your health because nicotine is the primary agent in both regular cigarettes and electronic cigarettes. And that's what's highly addictive. So even though you're vaping, it is better. It has less of these chemicals. So not as many toxins, but it still is the nicotine. The nicotine is what you crave. The nicotine is what you're addicted to. That's what we need to cut down, right? So the body, which craves the nicotine, craves it less. So when I quit, I cut down, my body craved it less. That was a shock the first night. Like I said, I went from a pack of cigarettes or more to half, 12, that's it, 12 a day. I know it seems like over non-smokers, but if you're a smoker, that's nothing. So, and I was so tired and tired and tired. And my sister and brother-in-law would say, must be the nicotine. I said, geez, I tell you, I can't stay awake. But what happened positively? I started to taste things better. I never really was a flavor person. Spices, oh, I love it. So things are good now in another way. So as you might get rid of one bad habit, you'll pick up a good one. So never fear. So the nicotine, which is in this, electronic cigarettes can cause you to crave the cigarette and you can suffer withdrawal symptoms if you ignore the craving. So there isn't a lot known about vaping. It's just relatively new in the last little while, but e-cigarettes can be potentially dangerous to your health in the long term. So they're to be used as a cessation for quitting smoking. Cigarettes can be just as addictive as traditional ones because of the nicotine and research suggests it may be as addictive as heroin and cocaine. Quitting cigarettes can be more difficult than nicotine, or quitting heroin and cocaine. It's a difficult thing to quit. Now, can't say I've done the heroin and cocaine, nor do I want to, nor will I ever. So I will have to take the research word for that. A lot of electronic cigarettes uh, may not be the best smoking cessation tool. They do not have, in Canada, they don't have Food and Drug Administration approval. So they're not approved for smoking cessation devices. And a recent study found that most people who intended to use e-cigarettes to kick the nicotine habit ended up continuing to smoke both traditional and e-cigarettes. I went to school a few years ago to become a paralegal because, God forbid, I don't, I just stop educating myself. But I remember a few girls were trying to quit smoking. I, this was about four years ago. I was still smoking. I didn't smoke much at school. Nobody knew I smoked till I went out one day after an exam. They just about crap. I said, oh, yeah, every now and then. I was probably thinking about it at that point, but again, liked it. And I remember them with three cigarettes. And then they'd come in and vape in the classroom. And the instructors, of course, would stop that. Little did we know. there was. I didn't know there was nicotine in these things. But... Now the that were trying to quit still smoke <laughs> because they were still smoking. It was just a different form of nicotine. So be aware, talk to your physician, talk to a help group, see what's out there, see if it's best for you. And the problem with these e-cigarettes today is the new generation is getting hooked on nicotine, especially in the youth. It's becoming popular, 
because they flavor them. Apple pie, watermelon, so good, so much fun. And we find that the youngsters are now using it quite a bit. So we don't want to encourage that, okay? So uh, if you're going to use the e-cigarettes, talk to your doctor and see if that's the best option for you and see what a quit date or cutting down on the nicotine will be. All right, cannabis. For those of you in the United States, there are quite a few states that allow smoking for prescription and for medical use. In Canada, as you know, it is legal across Canada now. Every province, every territory. However, there are parameters to that too. And just because it's legal doesn't mean we should do it. There are rules. So the flowers and the leaves of the cannabis plant are used for their ability to cause effects on the mind. So it is important to keep in mind that cannabis use does have short and long-term health effects. So it can impair your ability to drive safely, operate equipment. It slows reaction times. It lowers your ability to pay attention. It can harm your coordination. Drug driving, no different than drunk driving. It can make it harder for you to learn and remember things. You might have problems paying attention, making decisions, performing well, whether you're in school or at a job. And if it's medicinal or it's prescription, it doesn't matter. There are parameters. If you have prescription marijuana and you're a truck driver, one or the other gives. If you have prescription marijuana and you operate heavy machinery, one or the other gives. If you have prescription marijuana and you work with kids, one or the other gives. You tope or you work. There are, there's no choice, one or the other. Um, ingesting cannabis can affect your mood and your feelings. Believe it or not, it can cause anxiety, panic, fear. Uh, it cause your, sorry, your mental health. It can affect your mental health too. But it can, it can trigger psychotic episodes. What's real? What's paranoia? Your disorganized thoughts. Are you seeing things, right? Hearing things. So, and it can do that. And maybe that's your desired effect. But again, you want to be careful if you're leaving your house or going out and about. Long-term effects of cannabis uh, depends on how you ingest it. Studies uh, have stated both positive and negative things about ingesting cannabis. They say that if you ingest it as you would cigarettes, it could harm your lungs. It could have some substances in there that might mimic tobacco. Um, Nothing's really solid right now. It's still ongoing. It can affect your mental health. Um, Using it can cause anxiety or depression, but it can also cause you to gain weight because you get the munchies. So if you're going to be smoking pot, have some good alternatives. Don't be just eating chips and junk food. Right. Make sure you have some fruit and veggies available as well. And, of course, if you're young, you should not be touching it till you're 25 if it's legal at 18 or 19 because your brain is still functioning. And the THC that gives the high, is it affects the same machinery in the brain that directs brain development. So the higher the amount of THC in cannabis, the more likely it is that you'll be harmed by it. Okay, on that note, we're going to go into our last break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit more about our cannabis effects and how we can get some some of our smoking, coking, and drinking. So I am Karen Cook, and you are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Financially Speaking Radio Show. 
with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back to Financially Speaking. I am your guest host today, Karen Cook, and today we are talking about the cost of smoking, toking, and drinking. So we were talking about some of the dangers of cannabis, cannabis before to break. So just to let you know, I am not anti-cannabis. In the healthcare field, I think any therapeutic effects, so I'm going to tell you about a little bit of those. Uh, medical, medicinal, therapeutic marijuana, it helps. It helps f- the feeling of well-being. It increases sociability. It's a muscle relaxant. It's an analgesic effect. It's an appetite stimulation for people that suffer from, say, anorexia, right? Uh, or if you have, it's an antiemetic effect. So if you're nauseated, it's an anticonvulsant. It stops seizures. It can lower intraocular pressure for people that have glaucoma. It helps with pain management, so it can help with cancer, chronic pain, long-term pain. So there are so many effects of it, but consult with your doctor to see what treatment's best for you, what strain is best for you. And I mean, there's so many different strains out there for so different, so many different ailments. So it's not a bad thing. I'm just saying do it responsibly and do it when you're a bitch. So let's talk about the facts of cannabis impairment. Driving. Well impaired, no different than drunk driving. It can impair the skills you need to drive safely. The risk of having a car accident is greater, even if you add more alcohol to that. So if you're toking and drinking, it goes higher and higher What, what our, how we're going to be able to drive. And we shouldn't be. Um, using cannabis with other drugs right, can lower your ability to concentrate or react quickly to emergencies. So just don't drive high just as you shouldn't drive drunk. And how long the effects of cannabis last depends on when you last took it and how you consumed it. Did you smoke it, inhale it, ingest it, how much was taken? They can last six hours up to a few days. I know a girl who ate, I think it was two of those cookies, and I think she said she felt that effect for three days. So be careful ingesting marijuana. In Canada, the cheapest gram of cannabis is about $7.50. Price goes up anywhere over 13 after that. Um, so at this half gram pre-rolled joint, about 10.35. The most you can order at one time in Canada is 30 grams under federal law. Now you still do the black market guy, but again, you have to be careful. What are you getting? What's the strand? What's the cost? What's the cost of getting caught? Okay. In the United States, Medical marijuana is now legal in 29 states, and recreational use is in 10. Uh, across dispensaries, tracked by WikiLeaf in the United States, the price of an eighth of marijuana is $40, can $28 in Canada. It's actually 30% cheaper. Uh, part of the reason it's cheaper in Canada is that there's a much longer history of legalization, so there's a larger supply of legal marijuana growers and sellers being in the United States. But again, it doesn't mean you can... Go across the border with your cannabis, all right? They don't like that. So impaired driving or drug driving, exactly the same to pay. You could be in jail for up to a year. You can pay $1,000 in fines, and that's if nobody gets injured. So if you are drinking, you are toking, you are smoking, do it responsibly. Drinking and smoking marijuana, if it's legal in your area, it's legal. Smoking. It's legal, but it's harmful. So if you are trying to quit, just know that you're not alone. There are supports out there in Canada for drug and alcohol resources. There's Addictions in Ontario, Alcohol Policy Network, Canadian Center on Substance Abuse, Canadian Society for Addiction Medicine, Center for Addiction and Mental Health, Health Canada, Liquor Control Board of Ontario, and Ontario Addiction Treatment Centers, to name a few. Uh, there's Al-Anon, Alateen, Alcoholics Anonymous, All Addictions Anonymous, Cocus, Narcotics Anonymous, Self-Help Resource Centers, uh, Women for Sobriety, 
And in the United States, there's Life Ring Secular Recovery. That's a self-help support group for people in recovery. And there's National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. So you are not alone. If you want to quit drinking or smoking or the nar- any kind of narcotics you're taking, help us out there. Get on a search engine site and look what's in your community, in your area, and sign up. Call a friend. Phone a friend, right? Um, there's a lot of help out there. But have a plan. Make a plan. So if you want to quit drinking or you want to quit the drugs or you want to quit smoking, make a plan. There's many different ways to help. If it's smoking, there's a lot of different ways to quitting, not just calling. You can go cold turkey. You can cut down. You can partake and be. That involves working with counselors, not just for smoking, for drinking and drugs as well. Together, you find your triggers, whether it's emotions or situations or people or smells. You can make a plan to get through different cravings. There's replacement therapy. There's nicotine replacement therapy for smoking, right? There's the gum, the patches, the inhalers, the sprays, the lozenges. Talk to a professional, whether it be your healthcare professional or a group, to find out what the best behavior therapy is for you or replacement therapy. Remember your goal. Your goal is to get off that addiction, whether it's nicotine, it's the drug, it's a drink, right? There's medication out there that can help. There's prescription medication that can help with all three of these if you choose to quit. Talk with your physician. If you don't have a physician, try and find call. There's You can call the telehealth, things like that that can help you. There's combo for you. Quitting cold turkey, I can't, that must be difficult. When I quit smoking, I cut down. It was difficult enough, but cutting down worked for me. I knew six months. That's all I cared about. And I actually didn't have the date. I just figured I'd be done in six months, which I was. So there are combos. Maybe you can cut down. Maybe you can use the gum. Maybe you can go to a group. You can go to an anonymous group. Talk to them. Have your friends. Pick up a hobby. As well as quitting, you might want to start eating healthier because you know you're going to gain weight, which I did. So I started eating healthier. Then I joined the Y. So I like to swim. I'm in a pool four days a week. I have a bad back too, so it helps me, right? And then I started to do things. I started to do more more social events. And, and, And I got out there and I felt better and I feel better. So whatever program or combination or support system for you, please know you are not alone. And if you want to quit your smoke, your drinking, your talking, you can do it. Don't get discouraged if you fall off the wagon. Don't get discouraged if you can't quit the first time. If you want it, you will have it. See it, project it, be it. I know you can do it. On that note, have a wonderful week. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then...